Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to Norristown Area High School football. This game being brought to you by the Norristown Area School District. I'm Al Raleigh along with Ed Morgan, and we've got a good matchup here at Roosevelt Field tonight. Norristown Eagles getting ready to take on Wilson at up in the Reading area. And Ed, what can you tell us about Wilson coming into tonight's ball game? You got me, Alan. I'm yeah. just kidding. Uh, Wilson is a small team, and they're a young team. They only have 11 returning lettermen back from last year. And they're small in, in which that uh, they have 22 starters, offense and defense. Only two of them are over 200 pounds, the biggest one being 230-pound offensive tackle. And, of course, we all know the size and the depth of Norristown. It should be an interesting, I find it interesting in that 
We'll see how Norristown can come back after blowing away uh, Bishop Kendrick 39 to nothing, and then last week PW 41 to 12. If they can, if they can stay away from getting their heads too big and stay away from overconfidence because they know nothing about Wilson, and that can go either uh, one of two ways: either you're very psyched up about playing an opponent you don't know, or you take them lightly and they surprise you. Well, I think in the past, Norristown, when they face the uh, opponents that they've never seen before, they've always seen to be more for these ball games. Sometimes, I've noticed in the last couple of years of doing this, Norristown seems to get a little flat when they're facing the typical opponent that they almost expect to, uh, to beat easily. And I think you have to also realize that just because Wilson is a smaller school, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can't rise up and beat Norristown, as we saw in another local contest last week. That's very true. They were 7-3 last year. They lost a lot of starters, but they're back this year. The record's 1-1, one and, one, and they're coming into this ball game really with a, with a no-lose uh, situation. Uh, Norristown is, is ranked number two in the area by both uh, Philadelphia Paper and the Daily News, and they're, and they're the big team on Wilson's schedule. They're the dogs that they're the top dogs, and Wilson is is going to go after them. Like I said, a no lose situation. They beat him. It's the big upset of the year. They lose to him. They were expected to. So look out for a no holds bar game from Wilson tonight. Okay, for Norristown, naturally, I think once again we're going to see the uh, the good ground attack, and naturally that centers on Wayne Denson, who is in just two games already amassed over 420 yards rushing, and yet he's done that in I think only uh, 25 carries. Eight TDs already. Of course, uh, when Narsten doesn't hand it off to Denson, they can put it in the capable hands of Carmen Bello. Last week we saw Denson go down with a bruised ankle. He's back. He's fine. He's 100%. Last week, of course, 206 yards, just 10 carries. Like you said, 25 carries, over 400 yards. An incredible year so far for Wayne. But we'll see tonight. That ankle, they say, is not bothering him. We'll see how much it is. Okay, and one more thing. The Eagles are going to be facing a team tonight that are going to play a 6-2 defensive alignment which means they're going to be putting six guys up along the line. Naturally, that's going to be trying to start a running attack. So we could possibly see Matt Weaver maybe go to the air in Norristown, try to mix things up a little bit. be interesting to see if, if they elect to go with Weaver going into the air. Uh, but as you say, the 6-2 defense is geared up to start stopping the, uh, the end runs, the off tackles, the, the runs that they run to the five and the six hole, if, if you're familiar with that. In other words, in between the guards and the tackles or outside the tackles. That's what she has, six, two, def six, two. Defensive, six defensive linemen, and uh, they're spread out. The two linebackers, but there's only three defensive backs. Maybe Norristown will go after that three defensive backfield and try to take advantage of it. Okay, and of course, for when you're looking at the Norristown side, any deficiencies have to come. And last week we saw against Plymouth White Marsh, an offense that was able to exploit Norristown's weakness, that is, they play a 5-2 defense. You've got only Elsier and Chavu back there at the linebacker position. You can nickel and dime them to death because you have that short zone territory, about 8 to 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, and you can really exploit them if you're a decent passing team. Roger Grove last year, uh, last week, excuse me, uh, realized that his, he had his defensive backfield playing too far back. Uh, they were given too much of a cushion to Entreri and uh, to Bobby Kovac, and they picked him apart with middle-range passing. Be interesting to see if Wilson, if they did their homework, there's going to be a seam in there, a natural seam, behind the linebackers, between, in between the linebackers and the... Okay, and now it's time. Your prediction for this evening. No, I down. Okay, well, let's not be so blunt and sugarcoat anything. Okay, so we should have a very good game coming up tonight. Norristown against Wilson, and we'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. Good evening, and welcome to Norristown High School football, Almondstead basketball there. My name is Eddie Morgan and my partner tonight, Alan Raleigh. And Alan, the Eagles are going to receive the football right here against Wilson Area High School and they're set up at Reading, Pennsylvania. That's right. The Wilson Bulldogs uh, back deep for the Narstan Eagles on the near side. Narstan, of course, in their customary blue and white. Wayne Denson, number two on the near side. Number four, Royce Buda Suber on the far side. Okay, the kick is very, very short and they're going to let it bounce. Pick it up, and he's running, and look at this hole he's got. There goes Suber. Suber across the 50, and he's brought down inside Wilson territory at the 46-yard line. They'll mark it, and it'll be Norristown football, first and 10. And Allen, they got off really quick. It was a short kick. It bounded around there. 
Suber picked it up and made a nice run for it. Well, I think uh, Norristown surprised Wilson that time, even going and fielding that ball. And Bella threw a good block, forcing the man outside and giving Suber the running room. Okay. Edwards, number 87, is out for Norristown after this play. The quarterback, and he hands the ball straight up the middle to Bello. Bello. Bello pounding in front. He gets over the original line of scrimmage across the 50, and he gets down to the 45-yard line. Tackle is made by Mike Troutman, number 11, for Wilson. Okay, the offense for Norristown. The backs, Matt Weaver, the quarterback, number 11. Wayne Denson, Denson of course, is your tailback, number 2. Carmen Bello, number 6, is the fullback. Split end, Dave Elsier, 6-foot, 210-pound captain. And Buda Royce, Buda Suber, number 4, is the flanker to the line right after this. As Weaver rolling left, throws the ball, and it's incomplete. And Ted in for number four, Buda Suber, out in the left flat. And that's going to set down a fourth, set up a fourth down situation. And Allen, real quick, that 6-2 defense that we were talking about in the beginning of the show, played by Wilson, forced Weaver up in the air on third down and long. That's right. Uh, Narstown, you know, this is probably the first series this entire year in the first two ball games where the Eagles actually had to put the ball up out of necessity because for once the running backs just couldn't get any ground. Senior John Cabot's going to punt the ball, number 10. And it's a nice boot, not an end over end, but it's a nice one. And here comes Wilson. And uh, who carried that ball, Alan? Trying to take a look at number 11. It was number 11, Mike Troutman. Defensive back for Wilson. The Wilson Bulldogs now will have it first down and 10. They'll have the ball on their own 22-yard line. First and 10 for the Wilson Bulldogs. Setting up their offense. Their backfield looks like this. Jimmy Duncan is their quarterback, number 15. Brad Ramsey and Mike Susnack are the running backs, 43 and 42, respectively. Their fullback is Lauren Booker, number 33. The line looks like this. They run a double tight end alignment. Bob Drake and Bill Wagner are the tight ends, 86 and 81. Right tackle Joe Ellis, 74. Right guard Dave Tremba, 64. Center is Billy Fox, number 54. Left guard is Scott Angsted, number 52. And the left tackle is Brian Reedy, a sophomore, and a big sophomore at 210 pounds, number 76. And we have a penalty right here. We're going to mark it off. It is against Norristown. Excuse me, it is against Wilson. And it's going to be holding on the punt return. So now Alan Wilson in a bit of a hole. It is first down and 10 for Wilson. Referees start the clock back up. And the ball is what? Placed just around the 10 yard line. So That's you're right. right. You don't have too much territory. 11 or 12 to yard place. line. Okay, quarterback is Jimmy Duncan calling to play. Inside handoff to the fullback. Number 33, Lauren Book. It was a gain of three yards. And it'll be second down and seven yards to go. Del Chavu with the tackle. The right inside linebacker for Norristown. Let's set up the Norristown defense. Up front, Roland Carbone, Rich Mitchell, Chris Augustine, who had a great game last week against PW. Greg Chavu, the defensive captain, and Thurron Ellis, the sophomore, number 77. Linebackers of Del Chavu and Dave Elsier will get to the backfield right after this. Duncan calling the signals. Backs are in the eye. Ball is handed off to number 33, Lauren Booker, one more time. Booker gets out close to the 20, mark it at the 18-yard line. It'll be third down. And a short three yards to go. Chris Augustine brings him down. And like I said, Alan, Augustine had a great game against PW last week. Oh, that's right. Augustine really uh, played a fine game as the nose guard. He really controlled the line of scrimmage. Had a couple quarterback sacks also against the uh, Colonials. Okay, Wilson with a short third and three. Ball is marked at their own 19-yard uh, line. Excuse me. Duncan hands the ball off to number 42, Mike Sustak. And they are close to the first down. I don't believe they have it. There's going to be an official timeout, and they're going to measure. It looks closer, Ed. Yeah, and they marked it. They have it. Okay, Wilson gets the first first down of the ball game, and they're keeping the ball on the ground. It's a point that we did not allude to in the, in the pregame show, Alan, is that Wilson runs a very disciplined ground-gaining attack. And that could, uh, that could give the Norristown Eagles some trouble here tonight. Jim Duncan, the quarterback, number 15, the senior quarterback, pitches the ball to Lauren Booker, and Booker is pounded. Dave Elsier is there, the, the linebacker. Helped out by number 23, Rick Waldrop. 
And let's set up that backfield for Norristown. Defensive backfield, Dwayne Jones, number 22, Rick Waldrop, 23 of the safeties, John Cabot, number 10, and Jacquees Rochette, number 35, is on her back. You know, they, Ed, oh, go ahead. They gave him one yard at second down and nine. The Norristown defense has only allowed a total of 48 games rushing in both 48 games. 48 yards rushing. 40 yard, yeah, 48 yards total in both games. Pitch back, and that was two. Number 45, Mike Schustak. He got up to the 25-yard line. They'll call it third down, and it will be seven. And a good tackle that time by Jaquise Rochette, who really uh, came in from that cornerback position, read the play excellently, and just came in and uh, made the good hit. Norristown in their familiar 5-2 lineup with four defensive backs. Jimmy Duncan is the quarterback for Wilson. Play action fake, puts it up right over the middle, and there it is to number 82. Jim and that Shrek. is Jim, Jim Shrek. Shrek. And uh, Ed, that is exactly the type of pass play. As Shrek is brought down by Cabot in Norristown territory at the 30 yard line, but that is the type of pass play we alluded to in the pregame show that hurt Norristown against Plymouth White Marsh last week. Right over the middle, in between the linebackers and the safety men, it was right there. And a nice pass by the quarterback, Duncan. To Shrek. To Jim Shrek, a tight end, any, uh, junior, 6'2", 192-pound junior. Shrek Jim had any speed, he could have broken it. Yeah, he looked very slow on that play. <laughs> Here comes the pitch, it's right. Brad Ramsey with the ball. Bangs across the 30-yard line to about the 28. No, excuse me, to the 30 33 yard line. It's hard to see with the Norristown player standing there on the sidelines. In there on the tackle was 23 Rick Waldrop and number 33 Delbert Chavu that time for the Eagles. Looks like Wilson, uh, Allen, is going to. They, they like that eye formation. They'll go inside and then they'll pop it outside with the uh, two, one of the two tailbacks, either Ramsey or Sustak. Ramsey carried the ball that time over the right end, gained five yards at second down and five. Again, in the eye formation is Wilson. This time inside. Nice little play, number 44 is Rich Close. Halfback who came in, a senior, 5'10", 165 pounder. And it was a nice little triple option they run. They're showing a lot of versatility here, Alan. That's right, and it was a good tackle by John Cabot because uh, Close had some running room going to the outside and Cabot was his last man there to uh, stop him from turning the corner. Wilson lines up in that eye formation. But they have Close, and they have Sustak, and they have Ramsey in there. And uh, don't forget Lauren Booker. He also can carry the football. And Jim quarterback can take off with it. They have a triple option type offense here. And the handoff is to a nice hit by number 55, Greg Chavu, the defensive, defensive captain on Rich Close, the tailback. Stopped him for no gain. Chavu read that one perfectly. He was right there in the backfield the minute Close got the ball. Just wrapped his big arms around him and brought him down. Wilson has moved the ball from their own 12-yard line to the 25-yard line of Norristown here in Roosevelt Field in Pennsylvania. The Norristown Eagles against the Wilson Bulldogs from Reading. Rolling to the right is quarterback Jim Duncan. He's going to run with the ball. He gets away. Nice tackle there by number 86, Dave Elsier. And they're going to mark the ball at the 24. Yeah, the 24 yard line, 23 yard line call. Okay, it'll be third down with four minutes and 36 seconds to go in the first quarter. A short two for Wilson on the right side of the field. They're going right to left. And Alan, this is a nice drive. That's right, Wilson Bulldogs. The ball uh, consistently against Narstown's defense. The first team to do so this year on the ground. Inside, uh, nice trap play fumble. inside, and there's a fumble, and who's it going to go to? Chris Augustine gets up real happy, and the ball is going to be given to Norristown on the fumble. It was given to Close, number 44, Rich Close, the halfback, on the inside trap play, and he coughed it up. The hit was put on him by Abel Sierra. And did you see who dropped onto the football, Alan? It looked like number 61, Rolling Carbone, but it's really hard to tell. But Ed, this is, uh, it's almost getting to be predictable. Plymouth White Marsh, Bishop Kenrick both put on good opening drives on their first series, get close to the knocking on the door, and then all of a sudden the costly turnover, and Norristown takes over. I was just going to say that. Edwards, number 87, is the split end. The ball is hand off to Wayne Denson, and he gets nowhere. And the Wilson defense now psyched up to stop. 
what some people say is the best tailback in the state of Pennsylvania, maybe even in the entire Wayne Denson, number two for Norristown. And I'll tell you, uh, you know as well as I do that the Wilson defense read all the press clippings about Wayne Denson. They knew what type of start he got off to this season. You can better believe it, believe it that they're out there and keyed up, ready to try to stop him. Denson gained absolutely nothing. It's second down and 10. The ball is marked at the 15-yard line of Norristown. And Weaver's back to throw. Throws it out into the flat. And the ball is, did he grab it? Dave Elsier made a nice catch. Nice catch by the flanker back, Dave Elsier. Senior captain, six foot, 210 pound big guy. And I'll see your number 86 made a nice catch in traffic. That's right, Dave was right there, surrounded by three of Wilson's uh, defensive backs. And he just corralled that one right in with one arm and pulled it in when he went down. So the Eagles are, uh, you know, they're gonna take to the air, maybe take some of the pressure off the running attack. Okay. Now would be a good time. Well, third and eight. Weber. Nice inside handoff to Buddha Super, picking his way on a nice trap play to Buddha Super, delay trap, number four. And he got up to across the 20 to the 25 yard line. Not enough though for the first down, but it was a good play because uh, Suber has a lot of speed. We saw him throwing for uh, tailback Wayne Denson last week when Denson went out with the sprained ankle and he picked up 56 yards and scored a couple touchdowns. Cabot's going to be back to punt. He's averaging 37 yards so far this year on four kicks. And here's where the comparison to the PW game on a first down. At their own 28-yard line, Matt Weaver's the quarterback. Denson and Bellow are in the eye behind him. And the pitch left is Dwayne Denson. Denson looking for somewhere to go. Well, and he doesn't find, doesn't find a whole lot of yards, Alan. So far, this 6-2 defense, and we alluded to it, and the pregame show is really hold Denson to almost no yards. That's right. Uh, Denson that time was just waiting, trying to find a block. Bellow delivered one problem was there were two other guys there for Wilson waiting for Denson. And you can only do so much when the hole's opened up in front of you. Okay, Norristown coming out of their huddle. Dave Elsier, number 86, is at the bottom of your screen. Number 87, Edwards, is on the top. A handoff is to big Carmen Bellow, and he doesn't get a whole lot of yards either. Bellow stopped there by number 84, Jeff Wagner, 5'8", 156 pound defensive end, a senior for Wilson. Uh, you know, Bellow tried to originally go to the inside right side of the right tackle, then he broke out, no running room though. So what do you say, Norristown's gonna have to be putting it up here again, third and seven. Third and another long situation with a minute to go in the first quarter, and I'm, su I'm very surprised and very impressed by this Wilson defense, it's the 6-2. We thought it would work, and it has. Weber now rolling to his left side. He gets hit as he lets the ball go, and he was pounded there. But I believe number 34 is Steve Schonhauer, the defensive tackle. That's right. Schonhauer came on through there and was really putting the pressure on Weber. Weber's pass was intended for Lou Simpson. Simple crossover pattern into the middle of the field. A little slant in. So the Eagles are going to be forced back to punt once again. This is Cabot's second punt, actually, of the game. Another the, nice one. Yes, it is. And number 11, Mike Troutman with the ball, and Troutman picks his way through the Norristown defense. Hit by Chris Augustine there. And also on the ground is number 50, Big Chavu. And it'll be first down and 10 for the Wilson Bulldogs. Under. Got a break that time, too, because he was almost stopped the minute he got the ball, but uh, he slipped through the hands of Elsier and managed to break it open and pick up about nine yards on the return. Okay. The Bulldogs with the ball just inside their own territory at their own 47 yard line. The handoff is to the tailback, number 42, Mike Sustak. Sustak gets across to the 49 yard line of Norristown, call it a gain of four. It'll be second down and seven. Call it a long, call it a short seven. We discussed short that seven. as last opposed week. to a long six. We discussed that last week against Plymouth White Mars. Boy, oh boy, what a coaching clinic you can give sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it works. And that's the end of the first quarter. And they're just going to have to switch sides right here. It's not going to take a whole lot of time. At the end of the first quarter, we have a 0-0 ball game in our hands of Roosevelt Field, Pennsylvania. The hometown Norristown Eagles against the Wilson Bulldogs from the Reading area. And Alan Wilson has been impressive so far. 
That's right. Wilson has been able to totally shut down Norristown's ground game. Carmen Bello and Wayne Denson have been held uh, to a combined unofficial total of only about three or four yards. There you can see the Wilson huddle there. There, of course, the Norristown lineup on the sidelines. We're just about ready here for the beginning of the second quarter. Ball right on the midfield line. Wilson now moving from left to right. It'll be interesting to see if Norristown's defense can hold them this time. Wilson had put together a good drive, Ed, but then, of course, they fumbled the ball. Norristown picking up on that turnover, but they couldn't convert either. That's a simple dive play that time right through the middle of the line. It was number 42, Mike Suzak, that was taking that handoff for the Wilson Bulldogs. Well, they're giving him seven yards on the scoreboard. Oh, boy, I can see the, see the field a lot better now. Third and three. I, I just put on my glasses, Alan, and I can see the whole field right now. Boy, and I was at a... should do play-by-play -play in the first quarter with Adam. Without That's my glasses. Draw. I thought you were Howard Cosell there for a minute. Yeah, of course. This time they try to go outside, and a good hit put on there by Delbert Chavoon, number 33. Taking that handoff was number 33, Lauren Booker, the fullback for uh, Wilson. Booker's a big boy. He's 5'11", 180 pounds. And it's going to set up a short fourth down, and Wilson just might go for this one. No, I think they're going to go in the punt here. It's a little too early to gamble, though. I, For once, I think this is a good move, even though they have decent field position. Well, but then again... You're we right, heard that right. Wilson likes to throw a lot of uh, options. They liked uh, a lot of those trick plays. This is not going to be one of them. Straight punt. Rick Waldrop over on the far side is just going to let it bounce. It takes a Wilson, but it goes out of bounds. So what are you looking for this series? I think it's important that Narstown still tries to establish some semblance of a running game because they were just closed down in the first quarter. Well, that's their strength, of course, with, uh, with Denson and Bellow. That's their strength. Weaver is not a very experienced quarterback, and he doesn't throw the ball all that much. But that 6-2 defense that we've talked about all game long is really shutting down. I'd be surprised if Norristown has 10 yards total in the first quarter uh, in rushing. They've really been shut down, and, it, and it's all uh, to do defense. Well, now we've got one man in the backfield. It's Wayne Denson. Denson trying to get around. Right he play. is just taken down. Who was that for Wilson that just grabbed Denson by the ankles and jerked him down? That was number 88. Number 88 Al is Al Sulik, Sulik, the defensive end, 5'10", 170-pounder. You know, that is the Eagles' favorite play there, pitch right or left to Denson. Just has not been going tonight as the Wilson defense has been able to creep on through. Denson and Bellow in the eye formation. They give the Bellow the up man. Bellow just pulls himself through the line. He gets about two yards on the pickup. Andy Pacini, one of the inside guards, made the stop there for Wilson. long situation here, Alan, a passing situation with third down and 12 yards to go. And Weaver's going to put it back up. Oh, it's a draw play and a nice play. Larry goes. He's got only two guys. He's what a move. Another. Good move. You're right. Well, he's got uh, 87 there for a block. Great play. What a great play. I'll tell you, it's incredible how quickly this game just turned around and how many times have we seen it this year, Ed? Wayne Denson on a simple handoff, Norristown held in check the entire first quarter in the opening minutes of the second quarter and then Denson just takes off and breaks it. That, uh, that play could have come from upstairs here in, the, uh, here in the booth because the Norristown coaches are up here conversing with the uh, Roger Grove and his assistants down on the field. They might have noticed that Wilson was putting an all-out rush on Weaver's passes. Nice draw play, and when you give it to one of the best backs in the country, it's a great play to call on third and 12. Oh, that's an incredible one. To his left and then turn to the right. Well, it's just, and acceleration too. it's just athletic ability. He had plenty of room. The blocking was great, and Wilson helped out too on their, on their rush. They rushed everybody in a 6-2 defense what normally happens is you have two middle guards, one on each side of the center, and one of them, some more often than not, will hang back 
and wait for a, for a play just like that, maybe an inside screen or a draw play. But that time, six of the guys came rushing in a wide open field, and as you said, he put some French pastry out in the, uh, in the open field. Really, really an impressive, impressive run by Mr. Wayne Denson. And if you're on a Wilson side of the field, you have to wonder what just happened. You've managed to hold everybody in check, and then look what happens, Denson just taking look off. Look at this, this Booker. Wilson. Lauren Booker, the fullback, up close to the 45-yard line, and he's one of the up men on that kickoff return team for Wilson. And um, he caught the ball on the fly and made a nice play up there until they're about the 43-yard line. Call it the 44. Call it whatever you want. I don't care. So it's seven zip, nine minutes to go here in this first half. The Wilson Bulldogs from the Reading area. Jim Duncan, the quarterback for Wilson. Backs in the eye formation to give to the up man, Booker. Booker pulls his way through for about four yards there. In on the tackle, number 30 keys for Shet and Delbert Chavu, number 33, lending a hand. Nice play by Chavu, of course, being the left inside uh, linebacker. You got to make that play. You got to stand your ground. And when you're running that triple option that Wilson likes to run with their, all their tailbacks and fullbacks that can run, the linebackers really have uh, a lot of work to do. And we have a whistle here. Officials. Timeout, Wilson. Timeout, Wilson. Huh? And there you see the uh, cheerleaders for Narstown, the Narstown Varsity cheerleaders. I wish I could tell you their names, but I just don't know. I think that's your assignment for next week. I will find out the cheerleaders' names, all of them, if I could. You will certainly assure me that you will do diligent work, but we should find out because uh, we They do a great it. job, and they really lead this Norristown crowd. They can get very big at times each and every night that they're out here, and they do a very good job. Another decent Norristown crowd here on a very nice, cool football type of evening. I'd say there's a good oh, it's three, a first 4,000 people here. It's the first day of fall, and I still have my white spats on, and I don't know when I'm going to change, but it's the first day of fall, and it's just football weather. That's what it is. That's uh, all you have to do to explain it. Boy, two weeks ago, in the opening game against Kenrick, it was about 85 degrees at game time, and that isn't football That's weather. USFL <laughs> football weather. <laughs> Okay, the give is the up man, or no, quarterback Duncan keeps it himself. Nice fake there by Booker, only because he faked me out too. He gets into <laughs> Eagles territory though, up to the 48 yard line before his progress is stopped by Jaquise Rochette coming up from that cornerback position. Del Chavu was right there too, and he made an impressive play because like I said, the linebackers, and there's only two of them for Norristown, the linebackers are in that uh, hot box. When you're running that triple option, they have so much, so many things to watch out for, and it gets confusing sometimes, and they just have to hit anybody from Wilson that comes their way. Okay, backs once again in the eye. Duncan taking the snap. He holds it, still having it, rolling out to his left side. his man. Brad and Ramsey, number 43. That's what it was, and in there on the tackle, number 33, Delbert Chavu. And a nice rollout, Ed, because uh, that has got to be one of the toughest things to do, rolling out when you're right-handed quarterback over to your left side because you're throwing in such a, an awkward angle and trying to get a little zip on the ball to make sure it's delivered on time. Well, Wilson really is, is showing me a very impressively coached team. Co head coach, of course, Jerry Slemmer. Not, of course, you people in the Norristown area, really. Uh, but Jerry Slemmer has really prepared his team tonight. They're, they're picking apart. The, uh, the areas where you think there should be an opening. And in Norristown, of course, that being between, and we said it many times before, between the linebackers and the safety men who play very deep for Coach Roger Grove. And there's also a natural area in the left and right flats. When you have a 5 2, you got five guys on the defensive line, two linebackers, and you have four defensive backs. And one of those defensive backs, which uh, happens sometimes as Rick Waltrip or sometimes as Dwayne Jones, goes to the strong side of the field. And uh, that leaves a lot of room open there for, um, for, the, uh, for the passes out in the left and right flat and, of course, over the middle like we were talking about before. And uh, Delbert Chavu was just uh, trotting off the field there. He apparently had the wind knocked out of him making that tackle on the far side of the, uh, the field. He is on the sideline. He's moving around, though. I'm sure he'll be back in the game in just another play. Duncan having time, throwing over the middle. That ball is up for grabs, and no one comes down with it. The intended receiver that time, I think, was uh, Jim Shrek, number 82. Had it bounce right over his hands, but the impressive thing was the time 
that Duncan had just to stand there a couple yards behind his offensive line. Norris 10, I don't think, was suspecting the pass. Shavu is back in, by the way, at left linebacker. And the impressive thing for me on that play, Allen, was the coverage that Norristown gave that pass. They've been burned the past couple of weeks on that same pass play, but they had four guys back there this time. Okay, so it's second and 10 now. They have the pitch trying to get some running room. It's number four. Brad Ramsey. Brad Ramsey. Ramsey taken down, though, by Dave Elsier. Those linebackers, if Norristown's playing an effective game, you're going to hear number 86, Dave Elsier, and number 33, uh, Del Chavu. Those two names, you're going to hear them a lot. And, and uh, also, Chris Augustine. Haven't heard his name too much. He had a great game, of course, against PW last week. But that interior of the, of the defense, Augustine at middle guard and Chavu and Elsier at the, uh, the linebacker position, Norristown's to have a good game. Those two, those three have to have good games defensively. Okay, Duncan having some time. Now the rush is being on. He slips. Flag is down in the backfield. The pass it's is going to be a clip. John Cabin. I think you're right. It is going to be a clip. That's on Augustine. Preliminary. Somebody clipped Augustine as, as Chris put pressure on uh, Duncan. And Cabot should have come up with the interception. Oh, it's holding. Well, I don't know about that. I definitely saw the clip on Augustine. That well, time. it was one. It was either clipping or holding. And sometimes these and the officials, I mean, a lot of times people don't realize this. Sometimes the officials even miss the calls and they make something up. They don't know what's going on and people buy it. <laughs> hey, the and I, for one, yellow, don't. They're the guys with the little yellow flags. So. Uh, you got to remember that officials are people too. Good name for a show, I don't know. Ball is brought back to the 50 yard line. It's going to set up a third down and very, very long. Call it 28 yards for Wilson, and they're going to have to definitely put the ball back up into the air. Under quarterback Jimmy Duncan, number 15. One of only 11 returning lettermen for the Wilson Bulldogs out of Reading, Pennsylvania. And there's a draw play, and there's a fumble. Ramsey picks the ball back up. Or excuse me, Jimmy Duncan, the quarterback. The draw play was to Brad Ramsey. He fumbled very quickly. And Jimmy Duncan picked the ball up. And it's going to be fourth down and a half a mile. That's right. Fourth and 28. And Wilson being forced into the punting situation here. Six and a half minutes to go. Norris sent up seven zip on an electrifying uh, 80, what, 89, 90 yard scamper by Dwayne Denson. Matter of fact, it was probably Norristown's best play the entire night from the line of scrimmage. Oh, high punt, but it was really a poor one. This one's a short. And a second, a Norristown bounce, and immediately a Wilson defender downs it. Rich Mitchell, number 70, was lucky on that punt, and I'll tell you why. He, he, was, he was back there to block, and the punt was shanked, and when it's shanked, the guys, the guys on the field aren't looking. The guys who are trying to block aren't looking up in the air, or they'll get creamed. So the guys who are looking up in the air, and I'm talking about the receivers, have to tell the guys who are blocking for him that the punt is shanked and get out of the way. Mitchell did not look. They did not yell for him. The ball bounced around there and almost hit him. And if it did, I ball. Okay, Norris down here. First and 10. Ball on the 33. Quarterback keeper Weaver taking it himself. And Weaver, I think, really surprising the Wilson defense, gets himself out to the 43-yard line. Of course, Matt Weaver, uh, very important. Inexperience as a quarterback for Norristown led the junior varsity last year to an undefeated season. But Weber doesn't have many skills as a thrower, a passer, but he's extremely quick, running a legitimate 4 5 40. Send all your letters about Matt. He's a big guy. I shouldn't offend him. Just a thought, you know. He won't hear you. Impressive thing that time, Norristown, they're starting to use a lot of uh, option movement. See that? A lot of fakes there. Nice little movement in the backfield. Wayne Denson kind of just going backwards and uh, falling into two or three yards. That's what Norristown would like to do. They like to uh, do a lot of misdirection, a lot of play action fakes, a lot of faking into the line, and then giving a the ball to Denson or Bellow. And uh, it's been working for Wilson. And now, uh, instead of the quick, the straight pitches and the straight handoffs, Nor Norristown's now starting to go with the mid plays. Okay, second and six. Weaver this time rolling out, and he has all intentions of keeping it. Will uh, Weber having some running room, and he has finally pushed out of bounds right at the 31-yard line in there on the play for Wilson. Let's see, that was number who, 67, Wade Bradburn. Number 24, Sam Stiller was there also, the defensive back. 
and that was a keeper all the way at that time. Uh, Weaver just tucked it right in. He had no intention of passing. We're joined in the, in the press box here, Alan, by Ben Walters, a student at Norristown High School, giving us, uh, giving us some, some uh, Norristown insight. And Ben, that was a nice play, wasn't it? Yes, it was. That was a, I'm a former student of Norristown High. We know that Will, Will, Matt Weaver runs the 40 and 4 or 6, so we can see that he, can, he burns them on that play every time. Well, I'm sorry, but I say he ran it in a 4-5. Right? You know, that's the way it has to be because I said it first. When you run it, yes, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Is that the insight you're delivering to me tonight? I timed it myself at Penn State. No, not really, but, you know, you can tell. He, well, that's what the coaches put down, 4-6. Uh, well, that's different. I mean, always lie a little bit in the paper. <laughs> okay, Weaver having it now. Weaver dropping back to pass, has a little time. The pocket collapses, and Weaver just dives through. Picks up about two yards there. Weaver, I think that pass, he was looking for Simpson. It was uh, Lou Simpson coming over the middle. Number 80, 89, the tight end. But uh, he was covered. Steve Schanhauer with the, the tackle, defensive tackle number 34. He's only a sophomore, and he's 5'11 and 210 pounds. Not a bad-looking sophomore. 10th grader, 210 pounds. He's a big boy. Okay, now for Norristown, it's third and nine. Three minutes to go here in this first half. Weaver dropping back, taking the deep drop, dumping it off to Denson. Denson cuts back inside. Good oh, move man. by Denson. He just uh, kind of tiptoes his way through that line, and he might have picked up the necessary yardage for the first. It's going to be going to be a little short. As a matter of fact, they're going to be a lot of short, about five yards short. Well, it wasn't even close. Why did I even listen to you on that play? <laughs> it looked it's like be he ran up down a lot of five. It looked like he ran a lot, but you got to remember that he started way back in the backfield, so he did run a lot, but he only gained a couple of yards. And Again, Norristown calling a timeout here. Excuse me, Alan. While Norristown calls a timeout with just two minutes and 34 seconds to go in the first half, the Eagles leading 7 to nothing. The thing that I noticed there, Wilson again on that 6-2 defense, they are rushing six of their ball players, and when you only have three defensive backs and two linebackers back there trying to cover the entire field, you're going to have to get to quarterback Matt Weaver. If not, like, like we saw the draw play with the touchdown run by Wayne Denson, or a screen pass like they just tried the last play, they're going to get burnt. They have to keep a couple of guys home there on the line of scrimmage to avoid that, that getting burnt like they did on the Denson touchdown run. Well, we were discussing last week in the ball game that Norristown, you know, if they used the screen and the little dump flare pass to Denson out of the backfield, it would be very effective when you've got a runner of Denson's and his uh, speed. Yeah, you, you can see that. Um, one, that's one of the, play, the things that PW was doing against us. You know, we can see from the back in the, the back in play formation. They're in the eye of Denson back, though, behind him. Well, looks like it was a little offside, and they called it. They were waiting. Now they're back to pass. Pass is number 89. Lou Simpson. Lou Simpson for uh, first down. Good play. And that was a gutsy call. Fourth and five deep in the territory. And Simpson, I think that's his first reception of the season. Yes, it was. It was. Lou Simpson, uh, a big boy there, boy. 6'6", 225, a senior for Narstown. Plays basketball for the Narstown JV. He started for his last two years. This year he should be on the varsity. Split. Pretty good jumper, too. And Ed, that is a play that other teams have exploited Norristown's defense on. Quick give that time to Royce Buda Suber. Uh, Suber just picking up maybe a yard. I'm under him, I looked, it looked from our angle like Denson had some room out there behind Big Joe Trump and of course Carmen Bella, the fullback. And uh, Greg Chavu was also out there as a pulling guard. And you know, normally, that's a very effective play, but you have to remember, as we said, that six-man line, you've got one extra guy out there. That's why they had Elsier going in motion to the right side, too. Edwards, the split end. The give is to Denson. The flag is up. Denson is down. Let's see what the play is going to be here. Number 44 for uh, Rich Will. pulled it to the left side with just 35 seconds to go in the first half. Norristown stays with a 7-0 lead. Wilson will take over at the previous line of scrimmage, which was the 21 yard line. Notice how I dragged out the 20 well, as I tried to find out where the my, line is. My glasses fogged up there for a minute. But there was, <laughs> what an excuse. Wayne Denson down on the sideline. It seems like he's putting ice on his ankles. Maybe it started affecting it again. But something we'll see. We'll be playing the second answer question for this on my side. 
Well, Denson, of course, sprained that ankle last week against Plymouth Whitemarsh. Only played one half as Duncan on the quarterback keeper. He gets some good running room there, but number 61, Roland Carbone, is right on his ankles as the first half of the time. Well, we are here at halftime. Narstown in a surprising game, only leading seven to nothing against the Wilson Bulldogs out of the Reading area. And Ed, uh, with the Wilson band behind us here, making quite a lot of noise. It was it was a surprising first half in the fact that Wilson came. They are a smaller team than Narstown, yet they play a six-man defensive line, and that has been the key factor in this game. Because if you if it wasn't for Wayne Denson's exciting 90-yard run, Narstown's offense has virtually been stopped right when they hand to uh, take the ball into the line. Only two of their uh, linemen, both offensive and defensive, are 200 pounds. The biggest one being 225 pounds. Right. Now, you're talking about a very small Wilson team, and you're talking about a very big front line for the uh, offensive and defensive Norristown. Right. Uh, the 6-2, as you mentioned and we mentioned, we alluded to it earlier in the, in the show, in the pregame, is designed to stop the, the outside runs the off tackle runs from the the tackle outward and um, Norristown came out and they tried to run there but Denson did not gain a whole lot of yards he gained 100 and 104 yards in the first half on eight carries that's a that's a great that's a great average but it's but a deceiving you, one very deceiving when you realize that 90 of those yards were on one play on on that one carry for the touchdown you take away that run and he's his figures look like this seven carries for 14 yards. Wilson is doing a great job holding down the run, and when you hold down the run against Norristown, you've got a chance. Matt Weaver is showing some skills through the air. He's, he hasn't had to do it all year. He's, he's doing it now. He's showing some skills, but he's going to have to sharpen them up in the second half for Norristown to win this ballgame. Okay, the Eagles are facing something unnatural, as we said, the six-man front. I'm sure that changes the blocking assignments for the offensive. Narstan almost looked confused out there on an offensive standpoint throughout the first half. Uh, they couldn't they couldn't get anything going, and it was almost like surprise to them because here someone's actually stopping us. And I'm sure that has to be a shock because they pretty much had their way in the first two games against Kenrick and Plymouth Whitemarsh. Wilson is, uh, to me, at the end of the uh, first half at halftime here, Wilson is looking much, much more prepared for this football game than Norristown is. On offense, they're very controlled and they're, uh, they're very, very uh, meticulous in what they do. They, they're doing all the things that they want to do with the option plays and they're gaining some yards. They've only had 98 total yards in the first half, but they're moving the ball on occasion against a Nor much bigger Norristown defense. When Wilson is on defense, they're stopping Denson, they're stopping Bellow. Weaver's going to the air, and he's, gaining, he's getting some success. The thing that Norristown has to come out and do in the second half is something that they started to do in the first half. Misdirection plays, counter plays, quick trap play, maybe an occasional screen pass to Denson. The, uh, the great call was a draw, draw play to Denson for the only touchdown of the ball game. It was a great call because Wilson was rushing all six of their guys. And when you rush that many guys, there's not too many guys in the backfield if you break through that line. Denson did, made a couple of great shuck and jive moves in the, uh, in the uh, open field and scored the 90 yarder for the touch. Wilson's, uh, excuse me, Norristown's got to keep up with that. The draw plays, the counters, the options, the, uh, the misdirection type runs. It, it confused defense generally, and it also uh, allows them to, uh, to uh, solidify their blocking assignments against such a, a, a big line for Wilson for the 6-2. And also one other factor, I think the more Norristown uh, makes their offense more diversified, I think coming into this game, everyone has realized that Norristown's two big plays. You run Wayne Denson right or left on the pitch out, or else you run Carmen Bello inside the tackles. This way, they use the mixed direction plays, the quick track plays, and it almost is as if one type of running attack up the bread and butter running attack, which has been Norristown's successful point this entire season. I'm surprised, really surprised, that Norristown came out trying to go wide or off tackle against this defense. And I've said it so many times, I'm almost sounding repetitive. This 6-2 defense is specifically to stop that kind of offense. We said it in the beginning of the show. It's strength against strength. Weaver, the, the key to this second half is going to be, obviously, being down 7 to nothing. Wilson getting into the end zone and, uh, and uh, making this thing. But another key on Norristown's side, Matt Weaver. If the, if the, the offensive line continues to, to not play well uh, for the run for Norristown, 
and uh, Weaver's going to have to put it up a lot more in the second half, especially if Wilson scores. Uh, the key, of course, is Matt Weaver and how well he can put the ball in the air. Okay, so there you have it. Norristown still up 7 to nothing. Before we throw it back down for the third quarter action, just like to thank for the statistics so far we have. Of course, they are unofficial, but we'd like to thank Sherry Sandler, Sari Heitner, and Denise McCoskey. I remember those names. I was, was, was going to reach in my pocket and get the and get the paper for you. By the know, way, do I look good in my glasses? The first time I've been on. You camera. get out of here. But you know, I my I, tie's I, still undone. Though. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to thank all three of those young ladies because they've done a great job in the first half, and they better do it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Roosevelt Field in Norristown, Pennsylvania, for Norristown High School football. Good evening, my name is Eddie Morgan. My partner's name is Alan Raleigh. We're set for second half action of Non Eagles Wilson Bulldogs football game on Friday night here, September the 23rd. That's today's date, isn't it? Well, look, you had a hard enough time remembering where Norristown was. <laughs> I heard you, I caught you that time. Wilson with the football, their quarterback is Jimmy Duncan, number 15. They're backs and they have a lot of them. Right there is Lauren Booker, number 33, the fullback, and he's a big bruiser, John Cabot. The defensive back for Norristown had to collar him up around the 37-yard line. Let's mark it at the 37. It's going to be second down and short, caught along too. I tell you, and that is unusual. You see a back for the opposing team take a second shot like that because Dave Elsier had his arms wrapped around him and he just slipped right out. You know, uh, Wilson, though, has continually shuffled in two sets of running backs throughout the ball game, and it's kept them fresh, too, and it's really helped to diversify the attack. We've got, uh, let's see, Buddha Suber coming into the game, Rajon Cabot. Uh, Cabot coming off, holding his right forearm, pointing to his wrist area. He might have gotten hit there by a helmet. It's second and two now. Wilson in the red and white, Narsen, of course, in the home blue and white, as usual. Jimmy Duncan leading the Wilson from left to right on your television screen. The handoff is to the tailback, Mike Schustak. Great defensive play right there, rolling Carbone, the left defensive end for Norristown. And Jacques Rochette on number 35, the left tail, uh, the left half, but defensive halfback. I'll get it out. Go ahead. For Norristown. I'll tell you, Carbone, though, just fought off his block and hung in there and made the play. Okay, it's going to be third down and short. Just one yard to go. Norris, to, uh, excuse me, Wilson with that triple option running attack. Let's see what they do here. The backs are in the eye. Everything's up tight. And oh, there's just nowhere to go. Who was Great that? of effort. Number 55, Greg Chavu spearheading that charge, really cutting things off. And it's going to be fourth and one, Ed. What do you do? Go for the punt here. We're early in the th third quarter. That's playing it by the uh, the book. It's fourth down and less than one. It's got about a foot to go. I got to go for it. Norristown is so explosive. They can score from any place in the field, as they showed in the first half. The only touchdown of the game was a 90-yard touchdown by Denson. But it doesn't appear that way, and I have to agree with you. Even though, as I said, it's, it's against the book, you are so close, and if you get it, you give that offense the boost, and it shows them you have faith in them, that they can move the ball. That's right. Poor snap. The punt is away. It's a nice high one. It's Waldrop. Ricky Waldrop there. And he goes inside the middle, and he's got some running room. Nice run by Ricky Waldrop. Breaks a tackle from the punter, and he's gone. What a play by Ricky Waldrop, number 23. Touchdown, Norristown. And like we said, Alan, we called it. At, that was a 20, excuse me, the eight. Yard touchdown run by Rick Waldrop, the senior, the only returning defensive back in that Norristown defensive backfield. And what a play he made. They set up the the, uh, the wedge the wedge left, and he saw some room in the middle, and he just cut it back upfield, and then cut it back right, cut the, cut the uh, broke the tackle of the punter, and the he was in there for six. That's right, Ed. I had the opportunity to talk to Rick the other day, and he was mentioning that he saw, he, he almost had the opportunity last week to do the same thing, but he, his footing wasn't there. That field goal was good. I, I, I mean, a point after attempt by Menges was good. Okay, that is the voice of Ben Walters, who has joined us into the booth here tonight from Norristown High School, class of 1982, right, big guy? 1980, like I said, 1983. <laughs> I'm all excited. I don't know what I'm talking about. Nine minutes and 23 seconds to go in the third quarter. 
But I'll tell you, you know, you said how quickly strike here for Narstan, and there we saw Waldrop. Yeah, nice, cutting it back against the grain. And there you have to look at it. What if they would have went for that fourth and inches situation? And you just saw how it backfired. Well, and head, head coach, excuse me, Alan, head coach Jerry Slemmer for Wilson can't ask himself questions like that. I know the ball players are, but the head coach has got to be immune to that kind of thing and just set up the next offensive series of downs and get them back in, into this ball game. Into nothing. They still have a long way to go, but it's still, it's still relatively close. It's not the two blowouts that we've had so far for Norristown. The what? kickoff is up, and number 11, Troutman, Mike Troutman with the ball, trying to follow the wedge, gets up over the 30-yard line. Let's call it the 33-yard line. That's where they're going to mark it. Well, and us and Bulldogs will have the ball first and 10. I'll tell you, you know, I don't like to criticize too often here on the field, but you just <laughs> missed a cheap, vicious hit. Wilson players, I don't have his number. 60, I believe. Was it number 60? Number Let's 60. name him. I'm positive it was Kurt number 60. Kurt Sager. Kurt Sager. John Cabot lagging down behind the play, about 20 yards downfield. The lone safety man back there. Cabot, blind side hit by Sager. None of the officials saw it. That could have easily been a personal foul, 15 yards against Wilson. As I said, it was a cheap one. And you don't like seeing that type of thing, especially in high school football. That's the right. run was Brad Ramsey, number 43. If you look at Narstown defense, they were really what they call pump. They were really excited, ready to you know try to take anybody that's had all except for Cabby, who's just laying back. He got hit blindsided by number 60. That was it's a shame. We're looking at Denson again, walking on the sideline. Seems like he's back in um, back in shape. All right, they rented Wilson with the football. It is second down and seven yards to go at their own 36-yard line. Play action fake. Duncan out in the left fat to Sustak. The pass is caught over the line, and they're going to mark it at the 41. It's going to be three yards short of the first down. Nice pass, though, by Duncan at that time, rolling out this time to his right side, and he almost kind of pumped it up into the air. He took that little leap before tossing that ball off. Nice catch by the halfback, Mike Sustak. Sue Stack, a senior, 12th grader, six foot, 163 pound halfback for Wilson Area High School in Reading. Coming down to play the Norristown Eagles right here in Roosevelt Field. You know, now I have Booker, who's normally the fullback, as the split end. Quite diversified. Very much so, and that carry will give Wilson the first down. First first down of the second half. Say that three times fast. That was Brad Ramsey with the football. They're going to mark it at the 45. First down run by Ramsey. He was stopped by number three, number 33, Double Shabru, brother of Will, who plays offensive guard. Both the Shavu brothers made all Suburban One League first team last year at their respective positions. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, that Greg Shavu, I saw a picture of him in the paper this past summer. He's a mean off. looking dude. <laughs> Wilson rolling left, and that is oh. Thayron Ellis. And oh, what a play! by the quarterback, Jimmy Duncan, to get even the ball off. And, and they throw a flag and all sorts of extracurricular activity going on for the officials to call. But the penalty is against Norristown and the intentional face mask, there's two different face masks called. The intentional one is 15 yards. The act by accident one is only five and you can tell how many, how, what, which kind of face mask penalty that was. 15-yard penalty for Norristown. Brings the ball into Eagle territory at the 40-yard line. Now well, they Wilson got, has it first and 10. And now they've got the three men in the backfield. Duncan over the middle and a, oh, great. Shrek. By number 82, Jim Shrek. Over the middle there and Norristown, that's really been their Achilles heel defensively all season long. Shrek made a great catch because he was covered and Allen, it just seems even when they, they do cover that pass, which is rare, but even if they do catch it, the Shrek is right there with the pass. That's right, and as you said, Ed, they have been capitalizing, and they being all the Eagles opponents this year. Shrek at 6'2", has the height, too, to go over the middle. He's a big guy. And uh, Duncan is just doing a fine job tonight passing. Pitch left to Brad Ram Ramsey over the left sideline. Got a couple. Ran out by Del Chavu out there. Also 86, the other linebacker, Dave Elsier. John Cabot, the right defensive back, also on the hit. And I'll tell you, Wilson, uh, aided by, of course, that face mask penalty, uh, putting together a good drive here in response to the Eagles' quick touchdown to start this third quarter on the big return. How many yards was that by Rick Waldrop unofficially? About 72? Uh, unofficially, it was 72 yards. No, it was a, uh, yeah, 72 yards. No, I'm sorry, 78-yarder. 
Okay. Unofficial, of course. I could have said it was a 182-yarder. And I would have still said okay. Oh, check this one. They're pass out to Ramsey. Brad Ramsey, and a great open field tackle by John Cabot. That's the second one of the evening. Remember when he brought down number 82 in the almost um, the first um, the first, first um, series of the first, ball game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Cabot, uh, two good open field tackles, saving uh, big gainers. That time, though, Duncan had dropped back, faked over side, and then completely turned around and pumped it out into the right flat. One of the things I've noticed so far, Alan, Jim Duncan is not a very quick passer. In other words, it takes him a lot of time to get that ball off, and that could give him trouble, trouble later on. Inside handoff is to Lauren Booker, the big fullback, number 33. He gets down inside the 20. Well, we'll call it at exactly the 20-yard line. It was fourth down. There's, it is fourth down right now, and it's fourth down and two, and they got to go for it now. Into the ball game, number 44, close, 5'10", 165-pounder. And Lauren Booker, who just carried that ball, comes out. So here we go, fourth down and two. It's up to the Norristown defense. Jimmy Duncan, the quarterback for Wilson, calling the signals. The backs are in the eye. The line is clogged up tight. And a nice play, number 42, Mike Sustak, following his lead blocker, which was Richie Close. And they pushed back that interior defensive line of Norristown, and Allen, that was in there for, uh, for the first down. And I'll tell you, I don't know if you noticed that, but number 33, Delbert Chavu there. The Eagles line stunned at that time. Chavu was the man that they opened the hole for. Chavu just missed. He just got an arm on Booker, but he just couldn't pull him down. Otherwise, it would have been a loss on that play. Wilson's driving after that touchdown. Norristown's second touchdown made it 14 to nothing. And Wilson now on the 16-yard line. There's a flag, and they're going to call it an offsides on Norristown. Somebody on the right side of that line for the Eagles jumped offside. It was probably Theron Ellis, number 77, the right defensive end. Let's ring up the instant replay. What do you think? <laughs> well, he's a sophomore. That's an, he could make those kind of mistakes, but I wouldn't make too many. Here's number 44 for Norristown coming into the, to the game. Pat Pearson to take number 61. Roland Carbone's place. Yeah. I wonder what it, well, Patrick's a little bit, a little taller. Maybe that's it. Okay, first down and five yards to go now after the offside penalty on Norristown. Wilson, there's a misdirection play. Great play inside the five and down close to the goal line is Mike Sustak. And that's that misdirection play inside trap. So Mike Sustak who li lined up at the wing back position. And now the Eagles having some mass substitutions there on defense. Coming in, number 61, rolling Carbone again. Let's Joe see. Trump, number six, is in there, the big guy, the 240 pounder. He'll be at the left tackle position. They're trying to beef up that line sure. now. Lou Simpson's in there. You can see the defensive line getting down on that low crouch, trying to drive everyone backwards. First down and goal to go. Let's see if Wilson can pump it in. Three backs in the backfield and leaping up there is Brad Ramsey, number 43. Ramsey got to the two. And I'll tell you, Ed, this is where it's so tough if you're on the defensive side. You've got three guys in the backfield, and Wilson executes its uh, option play so well and uses the misdirection play to their advantage so many times. You know, the defense, you've got which way you're going to go, who you're going to key on, the quarterback or one of the three backs. Power eye right. Down low. Wilson with the football, second down and two, and the fumble, fumble. snap, and there's a flag down, and the whistles blow, and we're going to stop right here and see what happened. Jimmy Duncan fumbled the snap from center, but the whistle blew to, blew to stop, the, stop the play. We'll see what happened. Wilson's happy, so it's got to be against Norristown. Going to be Offside. offsides against Norristown, and that was a quick call, and Allen, that usually means that somebody lined up in the neutral zone, and when you do that, it's, it's automatically offsides. You don't have to jump, you can just be lined up offsides, and I know, because I got that called on me a couple of times myself. That's exactly it, because uh, what I happened? I didn't have my glasses on, I think. Probably, That's you didn't have problem. your helmet on, I think, <laughs> half the time you played. That's what's your main problem now. But, uh, oh, it was really brutal that time. Yeah, it was, but it was very funny. But I'm sure you'll get back at me later. Probably. Okay. I was back in the play for um, number eight, Lou Simpson. 
half the distance to the goal line, puts the ball on the one yard line, power eye right, and bowling his way into the in for the touchdown for Wilson is as they unpile. Taking a look, number 43, Brad Ramsey. I'm sorry, check that. Number 42 is Mike Sustak. Sustak bowls into the end zone. And Wilson now scores the touch on Norristown. And Allen, it's back to a one touchdown ball game. That's right. This is going to be a nip and tuck game, I believe, Ed, all the way down to the wire. Norristown, of course, getting a touchdown here on a 78 return, yard return by Rick Waldrop on a punt. Norristown's first touchdown for viewers that just tuned in. Uh, what was that, early in the, or late in the first quarter? That's exactly right. Uh, how many yards was it? 90 yard 90 touchdown yards. run by you Wayne. You want me to Denson. talk for you too? What, <laughs> what else do you want to know? <laughs> I gotta always look at these statistics, but in all seriousness, they're going for the two point conversion. There's an official's timeout on in the field. With Are three you minutes and this? 31, no, not at all. And let me get this out. Three okay. minutes and 31 seconds to go in the third. Wilson scores their first time, uh, touchdown. Score now 14 to six, and we're waiting for the two point conversion try by Wilson Area High School from Reading. And if you just joined in, we're in Roosevelt Field here in Norristown, Pennsylvania. The Eagles, and that's the Norristown Eagles against the Wilson Bulldogs from Reading. And this game is being brought to you by? Me and you. Who else does it? <laughs> Who else brings it to you? Norristown High School. That's right. You don't read the cue cards anymore like I thought. No, I, on, I see too much, and the letters are too big for me. But okay, now, you, they're going to go for the two-point conversion. That's what you said. Why, why are on. you not surprised? Because if they make it, they're only a touchdown, and an extra point can, can win it for them or pull them ahead. And when you're down 14, you're going to have to get 14 as quickly as possible. And two is more than one, so you got to go for it. I say Duncan rolling out to his right side, going for one of the backs. I say pass. That's what I meant. On the play action. He's right there, wide open, and he gets it. And that was... I think that was 82, Jim Shrek. Number 82, Jim Shrek, the left, the left offensive end, gets a two-point conversion. So with just three minutes and 31 seconds to go in the third quarter, the Wilson Area High School Bulldogs, say that three times fast, score the two-point conversion, and it's now 14-8, and Ben and Allen, it's a brand-new ball game. Yeah, now it's time for Norristown to, you know, don't be dejected. Come back and try to, you know, like get another TD. You know, you're looking at them, they got the helmets off and everything, and looking all, you know, disappointed. But if they get their, you know, momentum back, they can really do things. And then, uh, you know, as Ben was just saying, it does change the whole perspective of this ball game because now you have to look at it if you're on the Norristown side, hey, they need that additional score as that safety margin because, hey, uh, they go for the extra point out before they made that two-point conversion, and they've got a win here. But there's still plenty of time left, 3.30 in the third quarter. Wayne Denson and Buda Suba back to receive the kick. Kick is out right. It might go to the out of bounds, and it doesn't, and oh, it and bounds it past Suba, and he's got to get up. And he was down. He down in the end zone. That's going to be a safety. No, 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 no. no. It's going to be a touchback. He was on the ground with the ball in the end zone. Nobody touched him, so it's a uh, it is a a touchback. And that is why the coaches tell you when the ball is going like that and it's a loose ball, one, it's tougher to pick up, and two, when you're dealing with a turfier that's a little bit on the damp side because of this cool cool weather we've been having. You can see Suber, his legs just went out from under him, and he almost cost the Eagles that time. Almost, and he was very lucky. The ball touched him, and, and when it touches you, and you're on that kickoff receiving team, and it touches you, goes past 10 yards. It's a live football. And Suber very wisely jumped on that ball and didn't try to get up. Many guys will not necessarily choke, but come unraveled and try to recover the ball and try to make something out of nothing. Well, in high school and college football, even if he, had, he couldn't have gotten up, the rules prohibit once your knees are down and you have the ball, you're down anyway. So, But he did have to run over and grab it and make sure he got it. Matt, C Matt Weaver with a nice run there. It was a fake pitch to Denson, and it may have even been a broken play. Weaver made a fake pitch to Denson. Everybody went that way, and Weaver just tucked it and went up the middle. And Matt upset as Norristown goes to its huddle. So maybe that was it. And Dave Elsier is back in in the offense. Buda Suber is going to sit down. Well, Suber and Elsier tonight are um, 
alternating the plays as usual in from the sideline from Coach Grove. I think you're right there. Weber was a broken play. I mean, he was kind of surprised. He didn't see Denson standing there. Pete Edwards out wide to the bottom of your screen. Elsier is uh, in motion right, and the give is to Denson. Look at him just run to the outside. Nice tackle by Mike Troutman out there in the left flat. He looks like he's hobbling to me. Does it look that way to you? Well, it's so, it's so difficult to tell because he, uh, he has those herky-jerky motions that O.J. Simpson and Gale Sayers used to have. <laughs> the kind of break for like 90 yards. Yeah, like right, that. and you think just when you, they think he's going, they're going slow. They put it in uh, second gear, and they blow right by him. Yeah. And Jimmy Brown was the same way. It took him about a day and a half to get back to the huddle, but he ran to the end zone real quick. But, uh, and Wayne is hurt here. He was hit low by Mike Troutman on the, on the, uh, I think on on the, the hit. Area. Yeah, and you know how painful that is because it's the one area, fine, you have the hip pads and everything on, but there is so much exposed flesh in that area. And taking a helmet to it, boy, that's tough. And Wayne that time, when he was trying to turn the corner, all of a sudden he realized he didn't have the running room and he just buried his head down. That gentleman on the on the ground there on your picture is the great tailback for Norristown High School, Wayne Denson, and he's on down flat. And it looks like Alan, I believe it's just he's got the wind knocked out of him. They're not looking at his legs, they're just there standing there talking to him. He's gonna he's gonna have to come out now for at by, least one uh, play by the rules. But he'll be back right after this play. Well you know though, but everybody in this stadium and especially the Norristown coaches. Yeah, their hearts are in their throats right there, and they're clutching him. Whenever you see Wayne Denson even go down for anything, because you've got to wonder, he, he is their bread and butter. Of course, it makes talking very tough when you're throat. <laughs> first down and 10 for Norris <laughs> Town High School. That run by Denson gave him the first down. And again, a fake pitch to Suber. Inside handoff to Carmen Bello, and he bowls his way across the 30 to the 34-yard line. Call it four yards. It'll be second down and six. And on the stop, was number 65, Andy Pacini, the right middle guard, the right inside middle guard, I should say, on and the 6 2 defense. Oh, excuse me. Wayne the Train Denson. He wanted me to. <laughs> That's he his did. Nickname. Wayne the, the train. train. Wayne the Train, just like Sherman Tank Myers. Remember him playing for Coatesville not too long ago? Was a classmate at ours at Temple University not too long ago, also. Nice tailback and a very nice gentleman. Weaver now rolling to his left side, going long and overthrows Pete Edwards out on the left side. And on the coverage was number 24, Sam Stiller, the right defensive back. That for is. And Ed, um, are you surprised Narstown goes with that type of pass? Weaver being an experience, the line isn't giving him too much room and time back in the pocket. And forcing the guy to roll out, especially to his opposite side, it's a tough pass even for a good good quarter not that he isn't a good but an experienced quarterback to complete well it, it if nothing more it opens up the defense it shows you it's like you're out uh, a waste pitch for a pitcher it just shows you it shows that you'll they'll try it and then the next one which will probably be a run to somebody here either Bello or Denson oh, that's a play an incomplete pass intended for tight end Lou Simpson and almost intercepted that time by number 44, Rich Close, one of the linebackers there for Wilson. John Rawback, number 47, the safety man for Wilson, was also on the play, and it's fourth down now, and Norristown's going to have to going to have to kick the ball away, and Allen and Ben, it looks like the, the tide of emotion has switched. Yes, it is. And Wayne's limping off the field again. There he goes. Augustine there to meet him, but he got the ball to the 45-yard line. Will it be first and 10, Wilson? Good coverage by Norristown on that. Um, you look down, Matt Weaver was the first guy down on the field. It's got to tell you, that speed is, you know, it brings him down the field on those plays. And uh, give credit to John Cabot, too. He kept cool back there when, uh, you know, it was a bad snap and everything, and yet he got off another great punt. Okay, Wilson, they scored a touchdown the last time they had the ball offensively. Let's see what they can do now. The ball's on their own 45-yard line. Good field position for them. And the handoff, second man through, and a nice run. Falling down Brad Ramsey. Going, going. Narstown was an alert on that one. They couldn't even stop him. They weren't paying attention on the play. And did you notice that they with the, uh, definitely the momentum has switched here, Ed. And I know momentum is an overrated thing, and you hear the word just bannered around so often. But if you just look at the sideline here for uh, Wilson, how excited the players are, and then you contrast that with Narstown's sideline, and every side is down. 
It's getting interesting. Gain of 12 on that last pickup. First down and 10 for Wilson. Ball is handed to Ramsey again, and the results are not that same as the last run. He was stopped for no gain at all. Chris Augustine, the big middle guard for Norristown, stopped him right there. Nice play on defense. Second down and 10 now for Wilson. Jimmy Duncan looks like he's calling an audible there on the line of scrimmage. Play action fake. Duncan's under pressure. And are they going to throw the flag? Yes. No, they're not. No, they are not. Well, apparently they feel that number 44, and they being the officials, Rich Close, who was only about 15 yards away, was the intended receiver there. Theron Ellis was there on the play. And in, in all honesty, though, uh, Allen, in defense, it did look like it was a, uh, a screen pass set up on the right side. And, and no doubt he was trying to throw it away, but there was a player there. And you said it was Rich Close. Close enough not to throw the flag for intentional grounding. Close enough. What a pun. I didn't even, I didn't even. I could tell you didn't try. <laughs> didn't even try that. Thankfully. First play of the fourth quarter, and if you just joined us, we're at Roosevelt Field here in Norristown High School. The Eagles of Norristown against the Bulldogs of Wilson High School from Reading. My name is, along with my colleague, colleagues, I should say, for tonight's game, Alan Rawley, and Ben Walters has joined us in the booth. Alan? Ed? <laughs> I was just rehearsing. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I should toss it back to you. No, but we, uh, we've we got a good ball game here. It's 14 to eight, Narstown touchdowns. Coming in the first quarter, Wayne Denson, 90 yard touchdown burst. And then of course, early uh, moments of the third quarter, Rick Waldrop returned to punt nine or 78 yards for a, uh, another score. Ryan Minges with both of the extra points. It is second and 19. No, second and 17, the board says now. Duncan dropping back, has some time, goes over to his right side. There's a flag, interference, interference, good call. That's right, Jim Streck, number 82, was open down there, Jim Streck, and John Cabot nailed him before Streck uh, even had the ball coming to him. It was a nice try by Johnny Cabot, but he made the mistake. It hit him just a split second before the ball arrived, and it was a good call by both officials. The, uh, the back judge called it first, and the line judge also with the flag, threw the flag. So both of them saw it. And that's going to set up a first down situation for Wilson. And they are marching once more. Allen, they're looking impressive. And it's going, it's going to go down to the wire here, I think. Norristown's defense is definitely getting tested for the first time this season. And this is probably the longest the defense has been on the field for any extended period of time in the first three ball games. And we've got another flag here, Ed. The minute that play was off, so it was probably movement once again on the line. We'll wait to see the officials make the call. And it is Elijah. Motion called on Wilson, and that's going to cost them five yards that they got on the on the uh, interference call. The Wilson area Bulldogs. Wilson High School in Reading. Under coach Slimmer, Jerry Slimmer. Their colors are white and red, of course. Wilson, not a particularly big school. Uh, grades 10 through 12. They only number about 1,000 in total enrollment when you come against Narstown, which just for, uh, okay, they, sure, they go 9 to 12, but they have almost 2,000. And remember last weekend, ladies and gentlemen, Coatesville, the number one ranked team in suburban football here in the area. Upset last week, like they were last year by, against St. Pius, and it was the same situation. A small school from another area comes in and beats up on Coatesville. Hey, it just shows you the Davids can't beat the Goliaths, Dave, uh, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that was terrible. Jim Duncan this time rolling out. Oh, hurdles one, Narstown would-be tackler. Good play there by Jim Duncan. I'll tell you, I think that was number, who was that, number 70? Yeah, number 70, Rich Mitchell, was coming up to make the tackle, and Duncan just hurtled right over him. And a nice pickup of about 10 yards on that play, Ed. It's going to make it second and second and eight, now that the scoreboard reads out there. 
So they pick up quite a bit of the ground they lost there due to that uh, penalty that sent them back. Second and eight, 11 minutes and six seconds to go in this ball game. The give is up the middle to the fullback. The ball's loose, but the play was already blown dead. Nice quick trap play up there in the middle of the line. It was getting up there. Brad, Mike, it's hard to tell from this far away. Number 44, Rich Close was the running back on that play. And Close now coming out of the ball game. And you touched on it in the first quarter a little bit, Alan. They have a lot of versatility in that backfield. There's four or five guys that come in and run the ball. And Duncan, the quarterback, is a good runner also. And Duncan has had a very good, efficient passing game here tonight. Nothing long, but he's been very consistent. Now they've got the pit. Duncan out there leading the interference. Who is it? That is number 42, Mike Sustak. He picks up about three yards on that sweep. See in there on the tackle, who was that? That was uh, Delbert Cheville along with Jacques Rochette, I believe. So Ron Ellis was also there, and it was a great defensive play all around by Norristown. They covered their area as well. They stayed at home. Ellis was not fooled. And we're going to have the, uh, the yardsticks brought in. It is close to a first down. Just how close it is. There's the captain for Norristown. Number 33 is Del Chabot. And, you can and they see got it. it. Got it by about a length of the football. And uh, you've just given life once again to Wilson. They are really getting close now. Ball's on what, about the 19-yard line, Ed? Exactly. And this is where you got to get tough if you're Norristown. They've got to start controlling the line here. And I'm speaking of, uh, you know, Chris Augustine and the other guys there. Also, they're putting it in a position that they're not too familiar with. They they're, they're now have the chance of going under, you know, in the point score. And, now, you know, that's something that Norristown isn't used to dealing with since they went on you know, won the first two games. Well, that's a sign of a good team, though. It, uh, their backs are to the wall and how well they come through. Good little trap play that time. Pick up of about, oh, make it four or five yards. Who was carrying that time? That was um, Booker, Lauren Booker, the fullback. And it, no, excuse me, I'm sorry, it was number 43, um, Ramsey. But it was a great play by right tackle Joe Lewis and the right guard Dave Stremby, number 64. They really opened a hole over there on the right side of the offensive line. Nice first down run. And then I say the Norristown defense has been on the field for about the last five minutes, so. This time great they try play. to go outside, but good containment by Norristown. They managed to string the runner out, and then Delbert Chavot, Jacques Rochette, and others were in there. John Cabot also. John Cabot made that play, uh, Alan, because he came up. He showed very, very well. He read the play all the way. Theron out in there, got caught up inside, and, uh, and Cabot really had to come up real quick and force the ball back into the inside where Chavot and Rochette and the others helped him out on the tackle. But when Ellis got caught up inside, it was a great play by the right defensive back, John Cabot. And Greg Chavu coming out of the game momentarily and coming into his place is a sophomore, Greg Reinhardt, who, of course, is one of the brothers of the Reinhardt twins that uh, were stars on last year's Norristown squad and are now out at Arizona playing collegiate ball. 8.52 to go here in the game. It's 14-8. There you can see the Wilson Bulldogs breaking the huddle. Three men there. Pitch to the deep man, and I think that's Ramsey, and he's got some running room. He's inside the five. He's right at the five. That's first down and goal. And that's a great play. And Norristown is showing its inexperience running against that triple option. He can run. It's a handoff to the fullback or the tailback. That's what we mean. There's three ways they can go. Therefore, the name, the triple option. And uh, Ramsey just run that. He's showing experience. He's a senior quarterback, or excuse me, Duncan, Jimmy Duncan, the quarterback number 15, showing his experience, and he's showing his level-headedness. That's right. Uh, you know how hard it is. We've seen so many uh, quarterbacks, inexperienced ones, trying to run the triple option. It's probably the toughest play to run on your offensive side of the field. Talk to Timmy Reardon at Temple. Oh, he's of course, a big problems. game against Penn State. Okay, Duncan dropping back here. They give it to the last man up. Quick hit there by Norristown. They just pile on. That was Ramsey carrying the ball again in the left side of the Norristown defensive alignment. Stacked up that play well. Car uh, Carbone in there on the stop. Dave Elsier also there on the hit. 
And we have not been calling the names of Dave Elsier and Del Chavu all that often. Chavu's having a pretty good game, but Elsier, they have been running towards his side. Well, the big thing is, though, the, uh, the defensive line, the downs are not doing a good job of containing, and that's why you're forcing the linebackers to come up and make those hits. Second e down and three yards to go. Eagles pack close to the line here. Duncan with it, give, and they are in there Ramsey. for the touchdown. You're right, Ramsey. And it was to the right side of their offense where big number 74, Joe Lewis, I guess his father was a boxing fan, and right guard Dave Stremba, number 64, and they are not doing, they are doing, excuse me, a great job inside of the, the uh, defense for Norristown, which is uh, Rich Mitchell, number 70, and Roland Carbone. And we are all tied up, and the extra point here will put Wilson in the lead with just seven minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the game. And Ben, we have the, the, we have the look of an upset. Let's see this extra point, it, it's good. It's good. They're oh, good. A flag and a play. Flag and a play. But there is a flag and let's look what's going on. The call gonna be. And it is a late hit on the kicker, that's right. Late hit on the kicker and it's, Unnecessary roughness being called on Norristown. And that's gonna give Wilson another chance at the extra point. And that's gotta be a real kick then to the defense who did such a great job in stopping that extra point. And they're gonna have another try. And Ed, you've just uh, given new life once again to Wilson here. I didn't do it, it was the officials that threw the flag. <laughs> Very poor, but that was a, a flagrant one. The flag was down immediately, the kicker went down, he'd already gotten his foot off, up onto the ball and it was gone. Just one of those mental mistakes that's inexcusable, especially at this late time in the ball game. You and just can't give Wilson another chance to get up off the floor and right. beat you like this and, and that's exactly what Norristown did. You know, Norristown's defense strictly picked apart that entire way down the field. They were out there for an extremely long time, and it's probably been their toughest and longest series of this young season. And we are all tied at 14 apiece. Don't go away yet. Seven minutes and 35 seconds to go in the game. And Rennie Petrie will try once again. The kick is up. Oh, and he nailed and it. And he made it this time. And there's a lot of people, Alan, I just realized from Reading area that are cheering on the Wilson Bulldogs as they pull over the Norristown Eagles. And there are even more stunned Norristown fans on this side of the field who can't believe what they've just seen. And, you know, and there was another flag, Alan. And they called what again I the second consecutive roughing the kicker penalty on Norristown. So and again, another flagrant bad mistake, mental mistake. And uh, that's gonna hurt you. Of course, they'll tack on the 15 yards onto the kickoff and they'll be kicking from the 50 yard or the 40 yard line, I'm sorry. And Ed, now we go back to a conversation we had about 20 ago. The attempt of going for the two point conversion. Now we see the obvious benefits because now it's Norristown who has their backs to the wall using the proverbial cliche. They have to come out and they've got to get a good offensive drive going. And when you think about it, they haven't had any tonight. Two good plays have given Norristown all 14 points. The punt return by Waldrop for 78 yards, the big run by Denson for 90 yards, and that's it. And now it's time to see how well an offense can respond to the challenge. And they're going to kick the ball off. Well, they move it up 15 yards here. I mean, you might as well just concede a <laughs> touchback into the end zone. I don't know why. There, there, were, uh, there must have been two consecutive. Let's see what happens here. Also, you, can, you have to watch out for the onside kick. Now, that's another thing that they might try now that they... They wouldn't try that. Why wouldn't they try that? Well, that would be foolish because then you're taking a chance where Narstown is going to get the ball up real close. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea why working the ball from Norristown's 30-yard line. I, there was a roughing the kicker call, and that's 15 yards. I can see moving it to the 50, but I have no, no idea why they're moving it to the 30-yard line. And, of course, with the referees not having the mics they have in the pros, we do not know. Order some of those mics next week, will you? I will. But this is unusual. I, I agree with you. I don't know what, unless it's because you have two consecutive penalties they, they tack both on. But the first one I thought was canceled out. But yeah, it is. It is. Tell you, onside kick. Be quiet. No. <laughs> I knew it. it, it was no, it was a good call. It was a very good call because they're so far deep into the, uh, 
uh, into the territory. You got to go for it. It goes 10 yards. And uh, even if you don't get the ball, they're still down on the 20-yard line, around the 20-yard line. That was a good call, Ben. That was a very good call. Okay. But you don't know that I gave him that tip right before we went on there because I wanted him, you know, feel comfortable, Ben, I told him. And, uh, you know, make sure Ed knows what's going on. <laughs> I rarely know what's going on. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> Time, ladies and gentlemen. 6.35 to go in the game, and they're down. Oh, and the quick pass over the middle to Lou Simpson. Good call there by Coach Roger Grove. Simpson getting open there on the pass completion from Weber up to the 29-yard line. Another one called by the, by the coaches upstairs. They see when you're up this, this far, you can see those natural seams in the defense. And it was a great quick, quick popper over the middle, and uh, as lack for a better word. And uh, Norristown now is first down. Up the Norristown. Make it. Well, you know, they you tried for that. They made it, and they're seven points up. Now they're only they're only five points up, and a touchdown puts Wilson back in the lead outright without the extra point conversion. But then you also that's right, that's very true. But you also look at it this way: what's the difference? It's a five or a six point lead. Either way, if they go for the touchdown, they're still going to be either tying or having a chance to the win. The difference it. is if they score the touch, I, and I mean Wilson. The difference is right, Wilson Wilson has the 21 points, and they don't have to worry about the extra point that they miss, and there's possible of missing, <laughs> possible being in high school. The, uh, the extra point is not automatic as it is as you've, when you watch the major colleges and the pros. It is a hairy thing down here in high school. To go back on that last pass play, I had the opportunity to talk to um, Matt Weaver on Thursday. And he said he wanted to throw today, and that's what he did, and it was a good pass. There's a flag down on the play, and it was a nice hit by Jacques Rochette. Great open field tackle on Mike Troutman. And let's see, we are getting official. That's it. It's a clip against Wilson, and when that's it a biggie. When it pours, 15 Wilson, yards. Excuse me, Alan Wilson now has got to regain their composure. It's like two heavyweights just pounding each other in the 15th round. Somebody's got to come away a winner, and it's who gathers their composure the most and throws the most shots. So far, it's been Norristown, and uh, keeping with the analogy of a boxer, it's been haymaking rights. The 78-yard touchdown run by by, uh, I believe it was Johnny Cabot. No, I'm sorry, it was Ricky Waldrop. And uh, the 90 yard run by Denson, and then that long pass, touchdown pass to, uh, uh, to Johnny Cabot. That's right, we can see now, that I was talking about before, them. they had that motivation. Now what they call, they're pumped again. The crowd is standing up, watching everybody's, you know, they're waiting for the big play again. The defense is ready to play, you know? The, uh, we have a timeout being or no, no, they're signaling for play to begin action here. Hey, it's getting tough to see up here. What an excuse. Give me my glass. Okay, first and ten. Pitch over to the left side this time. No nice running hit. room there. Johnny Cabot, wait hit. Oh, and Cabot just uh, rubbing it in there, pointing down to the ground where he hit him. That, was, was, uh, that was Mike Sustak running the yep. ball, and it was a great hit by, and John Cabot plays that right defensive backfield position like a like a strong safety in, in professional football he plays the pass very well because he's got great speed but when there's a when there's a uh, a run he comes up and shows very very quickly and, and that helps out the defensive end and Cabot is a very good hitter too he inflicts a little punishment every time he goes for you this time they try going throwing only a pickup of maybe about two yards there the Norristown defense up to the challenge in there on the play let's see we had Delbert Chavu along with number 70 Rich Mitchell Brad Ramsey running the ball for Wilson on that play. And uh, Ramsey is a little guy. 5'6", 150 pounds. And Greg Chavu is a big guy, 205 pounds. And I wonder who went down when Chavu and Ramsey met one another. <laughs> Just 55 pound difference. And a mean 55 pounds. Yes, he's a very mean man, and I'm talking <laughs> about Greg Chavu. He's not a mean man, but he's a mean looking dude. Not too much running room once again. A uh, little quick trap play. They go up the middle, but Delbert Chavu there once again to meet the uh, runner head on. Also give a good assist that time. Who was that? Number 58 for Norristown, Andy Ward, who had just re-entered the ball game. It's gonna make it very interesting. This is gonna be the play of the game, fourth down and one. I have a choice. You only have 253 left. You have to go for it. No question about that, Alan. No question about that. Very interesting. They've got the three men in the backfield. They're going to run the option play again. They've been successful this evening. And he's got the running room, and he's got the first down, too. 
Well, that offensive line by Wilson all night long has just been pushing back the defensive line of Norristown two or three yards. And it's giving the running backs like Ramsey and Sustak and uh, Booker and the quarterback, Jimmy, plenty of room to pick up three or four yards before they're even touched. And it's putting a lot of, a lot of uh, heat on the defensive backfield. Johnny Cabot and uh, Jacques Rochette have been making a lot of tackles, and that's why. And, you know, Norristown's defense had only allowed their opponents in their first two ball games a total of 48 yards on the ground. They've been, really been put to the test tonight, and they haven't done too well. Handoff right up the middle. He's uh, taken down immediately, only a two-yard pickup. Carrier that time, was that Booker? Lauren Booker, that's right. Booker didn't a whole lot, and he's the biggest running back that they have on Wilson's squad. Number 33, Lauren Booker is 5'11", 190 pounds. Very compact, very strong-looking gentleman. He's built a lot along the lines of Carmen Bello of the Eagles. Have you noticed that? No, he I grew, haven't. He's small, but he is a... <laughs> oh, you're brutal. <laughs> yes, I am. So is he when he runs into you. Okay, we got second and eight. Only a minute 45, and the clock is running. Both teams with all three timeouts left in this ball game for both sides. Duncan back there, has some time. Oh, it's He's got looking, it. he's got his man, and we've got a flight. It's defensive interference. Here, it's Still declined the penalty, and a nice catch by uh, by Sustak, the tailback. And the hit was put on him too soon by Ricky Waldrip or John Cabot. I wasn't sure which one, all two, all two of them. Both of them were there, and along with Jacques Rochette. Now um, Wilson has to worry about the clock. They got a minute and 34 seconds on the clock. They might be starting using a lot of pass plays, you know, it up a little bit more. What helps the rules right here in high school football is when they have to move every first down, when they move the chains, the clock stops. And that helps you. And uh, of course, having an experienced quarterback like Jimmy Duncan is going to help him too. Hey. Like Alan, you said, they have all three of their timeouts, and it was a nice pass. The ball went out of bounds anyway, so the clock's going to stop in any event. And uh, right now, if you're wondering what they're discussing, is the fact that it was um, it was uh, defensive interference, and they they're deciding which one will give them the additional the penalty or the. Let's see, there you see the call. It goes against Narsen, it's declined. And, it's declined. and it shouldn't even matter, Alan, because the uh, the ball is marked where the man is hit. Right. And they just wanted to see which one gave him the, the most yardage because when he got hit, he was he was driven back a little bit. Uh, but apparently he got back to where he was hit, so it didn't really matter, so they declined the penalty. A minute 34 to go here. Backs in the eye formation. Dunking, looking over. A lot of crowd noise here. You can see Duncan trying to scream out the signals at the line. Back to pass, has some pressure in the backfield. Narstown in pursuit. Duncan holding onto the ball. Poor play by John Duncan, his first bad play of the evening, Ed, and you know why. Greg Chavu and Andy Ward put great pressure on him, but he should have thrown the ball out of bounds. There is no, there is no rule against stopping the clock and throwing the ball out of bounds. It's just intentional grounding when you're trying to avoid losing yardage. That time he just should have, and he had it. He had a man. The right, the right end was Alan Sulik, number 88 was out there, and he had him out there. He was not. He was. Or he wasn't open, but he was close enough to just throw the ball out of bounds. He should never have ate the ball there. That's right. And they wasted a timeout. They only lost one yard on the play, but more importantly, as you said, they wasted a timeout. They also lost 15 precious seconds from the unofficial game clock. Hey, this is an exciting game. The next game, of course, is against Pensbury at Pensbury. No, no, it's at home. I'm sorry, at home against Ben Lake Center. And. Um, <laughs> We That's were talking about that, and it's uh, it's going to be an interesting ball game. And it's their first league game, also. Uh, of course, Narsan in the National Conference Super One League, and Pennsylvania is a big school. This is a good tune-up for the Eagles. They've had two easy games where they've cruised. This is one they're going to have to fight for. They proved Duncan. themselves tonight. Duncan going back. He's Let getting pressure again. He there unloads it this there time. And who was given the pressure that time? That was number number seven, seventy-seven, Theron Ellis. No, I'm sorry. It, yeah, no, it was. Right. It was Ellis three sophomores who have ever started for Coach Roger Grove, and do you know who the two uh, other two were? Wayne Denson was one. That's right. And uh, I have no idea. Steve Bono. No. Who? Do you know? Carmen Bell. That's, no. No? Do you know? Uh, no. <laughs> and I can't remember. No, it was Carmen Bello. I'm sorry. Oh, it was. Okay. <laughs> Backs in the eye. Minute 15 to go. 20 to 15. Narstown up here. Duncan taking the deep drop now. 
Here come the rushers. And oh, that was just trying to, before he actually had the ball in his hands. And the guy I'm talking about is Mike Sustak. He was open there down in the flat. Ed. He was open. They set up, tried to set up a screen, and it was a great call. But uh, Theron Ellis, we were just talking about, made a super play. He was in Duncan's face, raised his arms, caused him to throw the ball high to Sustak. Sustak could have caught it, but it was, it was a poorly thrown pass, incomplete. But Ellis really made the play from uh, from his right hand pressure spot. And you can tell that's Ellis' blood. They, it's in the family. His sister being an all all American basketball player from Norris down here graduating, and he had a brother here too about two years ago that was on the all American on the football team. Fourth He's down and pass. eleven. He puts it up. It's a little wobbly. It's John Cabot gets the interception for Norris Town. And Ed, that is a pass that never should have been thrown. Well. It wasn't, it wasn't a bad idea by Duncan, see? And there's Theron Ellis, number 77. We don't have him on our picture, but he's walking off the field. He made that play. That's number right. 77. Duncan had a man over out there in the left flat for the first down, but Ellis hit him just as the ball was being released. He hit his arm, and he, and he caused that bad pass, and a great interception by John Cabin, and it's over. That's right. Uh, and what a good pass rush. You know, coming into the season, Narsen was worried all five of the defensive linemen had graduated. They didn't have the Reinhardts there anymore, and you had to wonder what type of pass rush they were going to get. And they really turned loose the dogs here tonight, and you can see what happened. Theron Ellis was in there on almost every play when going back. He had a great defensive play, but my star of the game oh, has got to be Johnny Cabot. Both sides. Offensively, he came out with that critical touchdown. One of the few offensive plays he was on the field for this evening. It might have been his only. And let's not forget that pass by Matt Weaver. It was, it was right on the money to, to, uh, to Cabot. All he had to do was catch it and run for the touch. But a great pass by Matty Weaver and a great run by John Cabot. He's just really played excellently. I'm talking about Cabot both against the run and the pass on defense. And also, of course, with that big touchdown, the winning touchdown for tonight's ball. You know, Cabot is a transfer from Crosstown rival Bishop Kenrick. He started there for last year for the Knights against Narstan. This year, he switched sides, wanted to come to a, a bigger program, and that's not being um, going against or saying any derogatory remarks about Kenrick. Wanted to come to the bigger program, get the bigger exposure. Let's face it, the scouts are here just to see De uh, Dents and everybody else benefits also. There you see head coach Roger Grove trotting off the field there in the white jersey. Roger Grove in his eighth season as the Narstown head coach. His record right now at 53, 26, and one tie. After this ball game, I'm counting that this ball game as a W. And we've only got 17 seconds here. Time just winding down. That was the last play. It was a great, great ball game, though, gentlemen. It was a great ball game. And we can't mention that the boot is here. It's not on the, well, it's the count on six seconds to go. They're, they're counting it off. Here's the click. Everybody putting their hands off. There we go. The final that, score, 20 to, 20 to 15, Norristown. Okay, the Norristown Eagles defeat the Wilson High School Bulldogs, 20 to 15. And Alan and I will be back with our post-game wrap right after this. An exciting ball game, Ed, to say the least. Don't start laughing. 20 to 15, a final. A game where the Narstan Eagles were finally tested for the first time this season after two easy victories. They had to come back and they had to earn this one. Were you talking to me? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, and uh, you mentioned that. Yeah, they're 3-0, and but uh, this, this game gave me an indication of what game they are. They, uh, they came to play. They showed their stripes. 20-15, it was a very tough-fought game. Wayne Denson did not have a...